Hello. Uh, today we are going to discuss uh, the roles of agriculture in an economy. So basically, what we are going to discuss today is uh, in terms of macro perspective of agriculture in economy. Now, uh, we can, uh, I mean, we have a lot of uh, roles, I mean, can be played by agriculture in economy, but what we are going to do today is to uh, select a few that we can discuss a little bit in detail, but okay, it will give an impact to our understanding of the roles of agriculture in the economy. Okay, now in the past, especially in uh, developing and uh, least developed countries, agriculture is the main driver for reducing poverty and hunger. It is because uh, agriculture used to be the main, I mean, main economic activities in those days. Now, a study done by uh, World Bank in India, that is in 2005, they found that the growth in rural areas and in agriculture sector had a much greater impact on reducing poverty. So it is proven that agriculture is still very important in reducing poverty and hunger. Now, second is the what we call as the spillover impact or effect of the agriculture. Once agriculture is uh, getting uh, larger and more and more in terms of production, in terms of land area, and therefore we need to have the communication, as such as road and also other things of communication for marketing, yeah, to bring out uh, the outputs of the agriculture or as well as to bring in inputs into the producing area. But to make these people stay there for the faults, I mean for the children, okay, therefore, okay, the other thing, very important thing that contributes to development in the rural area is development of schools and hospitals, for example. This gives the opportunity for the, for the rural people to stay and continue producing in the farm. Now, that is one in terms of uh, social economic impact or roles of agriculture. Now, when we talk about agriculture and economic, basically, agriculture is one of the component in three major economic sectors, namely the primary sector, secondary sector, tertiary sector, and under the primary sector is where agriculture is located. Okay, so I will not touch very much on the others, but I, I will straight away focus on to agriculture. Now, the first role in agriculture, we look at just example in Malaysian scenario, is the contribution of agriculture production or agriculture value towards or to the gross domestic, domestic products. In this case here, okay, uh, we are looking at this uh, diagram here, okay. It is in 2012, eh? Malaysia is said to have, I mean, the, the, the main uh, contribution to the uh, uh, GDP is, comes from service sector, which is 55. Okay, in a minute, I will show you how this uh, uh, affect other countries as well. Now, but again, uh, okay, now, okay, agriculture, is uh, in Malaysia contributes about 7% of the total GDP. Now it shows very small, but this is what is happening in the whole wide world, basically. Now the contribution of agriculture okay, is small, but again, it is uh, not saying by having small uh, percentage contribution, it doesn't mean that it is not important. Now we look at the trend in the in, in the other worlds, in other part of the country, for example, in terms of contributions of agriculture to the uh, GDP. Now we look at here, uh, there's a few things here, look at here. I try to uh, you know, differentiate between high income countries, low upper middle income and lower middle income countries. Now, we look at here what happened, okay, just to make some comparison in terms of contribution of agriculture to the gross domestic product, okay, we want to make some uh, uh, comparison between up, uh, high income countries as well as middle income countries. We look at here, okay, uh, from 1980, 
to 2012, basically in general. Okay, in general, we look at in general the whole scenario. Okay, we look at shrinking of agriculture contribution to GDP in general. But again, if you look to at high income country, okay, such as US and Australia and UK, okay, so the contribution more or less, you know, significantly less already since 1980. Okay, but however, very impressive, we look at Korea. Okay, the contribution of agriculture sector to GDP by in Korea used to be 16% in 1918, now reduced uh, greatly to a single digit of 3% in 2012. Okay, now, so it shows that, you know, probably this high income country, the contribution is let, let, uh, I mean smaller, but okay, it means that the uh, economic cake or the size of the economy is much larger. And therefore, when we talk about con uh, absolute figure, it will be okay, much larger than it used to be in 1980. Now, so let us look at in middle income country, okay, basically in general, okay, from, two zero, I mean, from, from 1980 to 2012. Okay, in lower middle, in middle income countries, the, there are still under two digits uh, percentage. So it shows that okay, this uh, two, I mean, these uh, middle income countries, uh, middle income countries and lower income, lower income, sorry, lower middle income countries, okay, agriculture is still yeah, very, very important in those countries. Okay, now let us look in uh, another things in terms of employment. So another factor or another role that can be played by agricultural sector is providing employment especially in the rural areas but but what i'm showing you in this table here okay still uh, uh, we want to compare between high income and middle income countries okay so in terms of employment in general for the whole countries I mean, for all countries, sorry, for all countries, okay, in general, the trend of yeah, share of agriculture employment towards the total employment is declining, basically, it's declining. But if you look at uh, in high income countries, okay, the trend is not as steep as the middle income countries. Okay, because probably what happened here is that okay, the high income countries uh, is equivalent or equal to what we call as uh, developed nation and therefore technology is the main driver in agriculture. Okay, but again in lower middle income and upper middle income employment in terms of individual workers as well as uh, laborers, they are still important and therefore labor intensive kind of agriculture is still rampant. Okay, so we can see that single digits among high income countries in terms of share yeah, of uh, toward total employment. Okay, and double digit in the middle income nations. So this is very important or very, uh, very interesting that we look at this. But whatever it is, the another interesting by looking at this data is all countries, yeah, all countries having declined in terms of share of agriculture employment against the total employment. Okay, and then the third uh, role in agriculture is to yeah, supply food for ever expanding population in the world. Okay, we know that, okay. Uh, uh, if, you, if you look at this, uh, this figure here, sorry, uh, let me show the world population on my, uh, in red, eh, world population. Now, in 2009, okay, it used to be, or it was 6.8 billion eh, population of the world. Now, we look at here, again, in 2040, okay, it is forecasted to be, okay, it is forecast to be 9.04 billion, and it will increase another, okay, uh, increase to 9.5 billion in 2050. And therefore, we look at here, increase in population means that there will be uh, increased demand for food. Okay, now, 
The graph here just to show distribution of cereal, just one of very important crop eh, in, in, in the world, that is cereal supply. So we look at here, eh, very important in terms of cereal supply in tons and the number of population. Eh. But again, what I'm trying to show here is that the share or the percentage of eh, cereal uh, production against the total world supply. And again, the num uh, the percentage or the share of population okay, against the total world population. Now we look at the distribution here again. Okay, for example, in Asia, we look at in Asia, okay, the share of population okay, against the world is among the, the highest. And but again, the food supply, especially cereal supply, is lower. And therefore, we can see that you know there must be some form of uh, you know deficiency in some area we can we can infer in such way but again in other countries like, like uh, african continents the uh, europe so more or less the supply is i mean in terms of share okay the percentage of supply in those countries more or less equal to the percentage of total population so this is very interesting. Now this question, when we look at the figures in the I mean, world population or the forecast figures of population in 2050, then can this uh, situation show the same thing, I mean the same trend, more or less, you know, the share is more or less equal to, more, share of population is more or less equal to the share of food, for example. So it is a good question that we should ponder, but again, what we are trying to say here is that, okay, the uh, uh, food, yeah, supply will be increased and how it is going to be increased is another issue to be discussed later. Okay, Now, we look at here, eh, very important products, eh, that is cereal production. So, the, why I am taking this uh, cereal production is because it is because cereal eh, in total is the main diet for more or less everybody in the world. But what, what we are doing here, say, here, here to that, uh, today sorry, uh, is that Okay, look at from the total 2.55 billion tons of cereal that is produced in 2012, Asia is the is Asia is the highest yeah, producing region for this one here. Okay, now followed by uh, North America and Europe. Okay, but here again, even though cereal probably in Asia, the focus would be on rice. Okay, now interesting that we we we, we look the graph earlier we show that asia is having high production but at the same time the population is also high all right then we look at uh, very important things that determine the 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 uh, the production that is the land efficiency now we look at here america north america is the one of those efficient countries of producing cereals again Okay, in Africa, so here again, it is one of those least efficient relatively. But again, we look at here Southeast Asia, but in future, in future, the efficiency probably need to be increased to fulfill the demand for food because there will be a yeah, limited land area that we forecast to have to happen. So these are the challenges in producing uh, more food for the future. All right. 